Hey everyone, it's Queen C and welcome back to my channel. Just a reminder that this is a space where we talk about past and current celebrities and take a look into their lives and backgrounds to find out who they are, what happened to them, and where they are now. As you can tell by the title, today we'll be talking about the 2000s hip-hop artist, Baby Bash. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And with all that out the way, let's get into this video. <laughs> Ronald Ray Bryan, or better known as the stage name Baby Bash, is an urban Latino R&B and hip hop artist born on October 18, 1975 in Vallejo, California to an Anglo father and a Latin mother. Baby Bash was raised by his grandmother who loved and nurtured him throughout the years and it is believed that both his mother and his father suffered from addiction and were in and out of jail, which is why they weren't able to take care of him. In the mid-1990s, he went on to attend a junior college in the Bay Area where he was on the basketball team. Some sources said that he gave up his basketball dreams due to his height, but it was actually believed to be an ankle injury that prevented him from furthering his basketball career. But at that point, Bash was already starting to take his music career seriously. Baby Bash got into music at a young age and was always split between basketball and music, but as time went on, the influences from his uncles is what made him begin to craft his musical career. In the year 1994, Baby Bash began making music but under the stage name Baby Beach, with the name Baby Beach deriving from his family and friends always seeing him riding in a little Mitsubishi truck. He said in a 2007 interview with the Houston Chronicle that quote, I was known first as Baby Beach, Baby Beachy. Back in the day, I had a Mitsubishi mini truck, a little hoopty truck. Driving around, people in California were like, hey, that's that guy in the Mitsubishi, end quote. In 1998, he was part of a group called Potna Deuce, whose album Welcome to the Tilt appeared briefly online before disappearing. Potna Deuce went on to release Heron Soup in 1996 independently before disbanding altogether. Beach next formed a group called Latino Velvet with artist JT, where they released albums such as The Latino Velvet Project, Click, Velvet City, and The Campus Back. Beach ended up parting ways with Latino Velvet and left the Bay Area. It was a trip to Texas where he opened up for Latino artist South Park Mexican in 2002 that opened his eyes and is when he truly started taking his music career seriously. While in Texas, Dope House signed him as a solo artist where he began making music and came out with two albums and multiple singles. His albums were heavily influenced by the Dirty South but as the year progressed, he began to mellow out his sound. After 2002, he switched his name from Baby Beach to Baby Bash and started releasing music under that moniker. As for why he changed it, he said that quote, When I got to Texas, I think the rapper South Park Mexican hit me with a bash. It rhymed with cash and some funny stuff when I rhyme. End quote. Due to the work he put in and the countless hours honing and perfecting his craft, he received acclaim and caught the attention of major record labels in the music industry, when he ended up signing a major deal with Universal Records that same year. Listening to everything from E-40 to Tom Petty to Steel Pulse, Baby Bash expanded his sound and went on to do several collaborations and create multiple hit singles and albums throughout his career, which catapulted him into mainstream stardom. After his time in college and with several groups in the late 90s, as well as being split between his basketball and music career, Baby Bash began gaining popularity through the early and mid-2000s and went on to release a vast array of songs and many albums as a solo artist, those of which include Savage Dreams, which was released in 2001 and contained 19 songs. It was his first solo album which showcased a mixture of West Coast style with the Southern flow and beats. His second album, On the Cool, was released in 2002 and contained 17 songs. The album had guest appearances by some of the artists featured on his first album including South Park Mexican, JT and Don Sisko, as well as Russell Lee, Mr. Shadow and DJ Kane. It was produced by Happy Perez, Big Eyes and Oral B from the Playboy Foundation and Johnny Z. Both albums were released when he was performing under the name Baby Beach and while he was signed to Dope House Records. The Smoke and Nephew, which was released in 2003, consisted of 16 songs, one in which he went on to collaborate with Frankie J on, which was a single called Sugar Sugar, which garnered mainstream attention and peaked at number 7 on the Billboard Hot 100 in 2003. This was Bash's first album under his new name and mainstream label where it reached number 48 on the Billboard 200 chart. It gained the attention of fans worldwide and ended up being certified gold by the RIAA five months after its release and as of March 2005, the album sold a little over 530k copies in the United States. Super Saucy was then released in 2005 and contained 15 songs. He had the hit single Baby I'm Back featuring Akon, which was a commercial success and reached number 19 on the Billboard Hot 100. It gained the attention of fans and critics alike and was also certified gold by the RIAA for selling over 500k copies.
His album ended up debuting at number 11 on the Billboard 200 with 48,000 copies sold in the first week, becoming Baby Bash's highest charting album to date. Both albums were released during his time while signed under Universal Records. Cyclone was his 2007 album released under Arista Records that consisted of 14 songs and had the hit single Cyclone featuring T-Pain that peaked at number 7 on the Billboard Hot 100 in 2005. She moves her body like a cyclone and she makes me wanna do it all night long. Despite the chart top and title track, Cyclone ended up getting controversial reviews where Baby Bash's style and flow were heavily criticized. In a Rolling Stones review, Christian Horde says, quote, And though Baby Bash has a nimble flow, he doesn't have much to say and his rhymes are less than impressive. End quote. And in a review by David Jeffries on AllMusic.com, it was said that, quote, Cyclone wants Justin Timberlake's size sales so bad it sells short by half of what makes Baby Bash interesting and ends up a pleasant diversion, but nothing memorable. End quote. His album ended up reaching number 30 on the Billboard 200 chart and number 11 on the Billboard Top R&B and Hip Hop chart and went on to sell 26,000 copies in its first week. Baby Bash went on to be featured on some of the hottest tracks, one of which was Noah Some More Obsession by Frankie Jane in 2005, which peaked at number 3 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart, number 5 in Australia, and number 4 in New Zealand in 2005. The song saw a lot of success when it came out and even was certified gold in Australia by the ARIA selling around 35,000 copies and certified platinum by the RIAA for selling 1 million copies. He also released his song Show Du Doo Wop featuring Tiffany Barreal in 2005 under Universal Records and Out of Control featuring Pitbull in December of 2009 under J Records. After four years without an album, he went on to release Bashtown in 2011 under Upstairs and Bashtown Records, which contained 17 songs and had six hit singles, those of which include three promotional singles, Buttercup, Fancy Girl, and Good For My Money, and three official singles, Go Girl featuring E-40, Swan and Anna Na, and Headhunter. Go Girl featuring E-40 was the most successful song of that album. His album ended up peaking at number 38 on the R&B and Hip Hop album chart and sold around 6,000 copies to date. Baby Bash also released three more albums, Unsung in 2013, Ronnie Ray All Day in 2014, and Don't Panic, It's Organic in 2016, under several different labels. A year later in 2017, Bash reunited with Frankie J on another collaboration, Sangria, the album. Baby Bash has collaborated with numerous other artists throughout his career such as West Coast rappers like E-40 and Mac Dre, R&B singers like Akon and Mario, and other Latino rappers such as Fat Joe and Pitbull, just to name a few. He also wrote lyrics for singers such as Paula DeAnda, Jennifer Hudson, and Frankie J. Up until this point, Baby Bash has garnered the attention of millions worldwide with his catchy music and beats. He has been able to gain widescreen fame and release hit after hit. While in the spotlight, it was rumored that he had a few relationships here and there and some legal trouble as well. According to an article written in September of 2021 on Biography.org, it was said that in between the years of 2005 and 2008, Baby Bash was in a relationship with American singer and songwriter Natalie Alvarado. A few years after the breakup in 2010, it was rumored that Baby Bash was in a relationship with dancer Brit Nicole, who were both seen spending time together, but it remained unclear whether or not they were really in a relationship. Sometime in the 2010s, Baby Bash dated Paula DeAnda, an American singer and songwriter who's best known for her 2000 hit single, Walk Away, Remember Me. On September 10, 2011, Baby Bash and the rapper Paul Wall were arrested in El Paso, Texas on a possession charge after the police found cannabis on them. Based on an article in 2011, both were arrested at 1.30 a.m., but it was alleged that the two only had two ounces of cannabis on them. However, according to Baby Bash, they consumed what they had on them and the rest was made simply because they smelled like smoke. They were eventually released when they posted a $300 bail after only spending 12 hours in jail. A few years after that, Baby Bash and Paul Wall landed themselves in legal trouble once again. In the early morning of Friday, December 23, 2016, Baby Bash and Paul Wall were arrested, this time on charges of possession of a controlled substance with intent to deliver. A narcotics warrant was issued to Yale Street in the Heights around 12.15 a.m. where they recovered cannabis and cannabis-based products. Their bond was set at $20,000 and it was said that they made bond that Friday afternoon. Once released, Baby Bash took to his Twitter and wrote, quote, Got caught up with a little weed, y'all. No biggie. LOL. Hashtag cannabis community. End quote. Bash, Wall, and 150 others were at a private party being held at a smoke shop on Yale Street when law enforcement issued a warrant and made arrests. According to an article on KHOU Houston written on March 21st, 2017, a Harris County grand jury declined to indict rappers Paul Wall and Baby Bash on felony drug charges. It was announced Tuesday. 
The grand jury opted not to hand indictments against Paul Michael Slayton, known as Paul Wall, and Ronald Bryant, known as Baby Bash. The grand jury indicted five other people on drug charges and declined to indict five others, including the two rap artists. A no bill issued by a grand jury means that jurors did not find sufficient evidence for charges to proceed to a trial. Once the trial was over, Paul Wall took to Twitter and tweeted his thanks to God for the outcome. Baby Bosch was a musical artist, no doubt, but he also had an acting role in the 2004 movie Pain, directed by Amira Valenia. Pain is an intimate and poetic look into the lives and hearts of two drug dealers whose word of money, power, and shootouts is shaken to the core by one Christian woman. This was believed to be his only acting role, or at least the only one I could find. Baby Bash dominated the 2000s with his hit singles and chart ranking albums, but he ended up slowing down in the year 2000, where he released his last album, Cyclone, before taking a four-year hiatus. This is where his popularity started to decrease, and during those four years, he was making a few songs here and there, but wasn't making as much music as before. I couldn't find a lot on what he was doing within those four years, but in 2011, he came back and went on to release four albums and multiple singles. Some may have thought that this was the end of his musical career or that his music career ended in the 2000s era, but I'm here to say that you're wrong. Although his popularity did slow down, Baby Bash is still very much active in the music scene and on social media platforms. After his 2017 album, Baby Bash went on to release multiple singers throughout the years, some under the Bashtown Records label with Frankie J, Miguel and Too Short, and longtime friend and rap artist Paul Wall, amongst others. It is believed that Baby Bash has close ties to the Bashtown music group as well. Baby Bash released an album titled El Natural on February 14, 2021 with an 18-song track list under the Bashtown Music Group label. Baby Bash went on to release a song in December of 2021 called Crystal Blue Skies, which featured musical artists Crystal Poppin, Buns, Coast, and GT Garza. Mm -hmm. He also dropped another single titled Roll It Up featuring Coda in that same month. Baby Bash has worked on various projects recently and has been on several projects with actor Danny Trejo. On February 14, 2022, Baby Bash was featured on a few songs on the Trejo Soul Collection Volume 1 album. Another fun fact that I found out about him is that he's a six-time High Times Cannabis Cup winner. Baby Bash continues to work on various projects and has maintained a loyal core fan base throughout the years where his Instagram sits at over 400k subscribers, his YouTube is at over 600k, and his Spotify has a little over 4 million monthly listeners as of today. Baby Bash isn't just limited to what I've told y'all, he has been very, very active throughout the years. Although he isn't seeing the mass influx of popularity now as he was back then, he's still going strong in his music career and it doesn't seem like he may be stopping anytime soon. As of today, Bash resides in Houston with his children and is currently 46 years old. I used to love Baby Bash growing up and Sugar Sugar was definitely my song. It's nice to see that he's still active with his music as well as his online presence. The 2000s was filled with great music and today's generation would never know the impact that it had on people. Baby Bash has a long and eventful music career that not only spanned the charts, but most definitely contributed to and made an impact on the culture, and he still does to this day, especially in the Latin music scene. Thank you for tuning in to another installment of Forgotten Artists and Groups of the 2000s. I hope that you enjoyed this topic, and please let me know in the comments down below your thoughts and opinions, as well as any other topics you think I should cover. If you liked this video, don't forget to check out my first video, which I will have on screen right now. Thank you again, and please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and I'll see y'all in the next little video.